Okay, let's solve another example. This time, let's try to do it quicker. So let's say the circuit is given to us and input output characteristics is asked. So for this circuit, I know that uh, um, I'm going to do this, the exact same thing that, okay, if this is the plot, this is V in and this is V out. Let's uh, start to sweep the V in from negative infinity to positive infinity or vice versa. I can do it either way. I'm going to start from the value that is going to turn off the diode because I know that when diode is turned off, I have an open circuit, things become extremely simple. So at what input voltage, by the way, when you have a notation like this, if you, if you forgot, it means that like, like this, showing, like, showing V in like this, it means that we have a voltage source equal to V in here, right? But V out is just basically a terminal. Now, uh, looking at V in and the way it's connected, uh, what do you think is going to be basically the value that turns off the die, positive infinity or negative infinity? Well, if you think about it, if I'm at the positive infinity, well, there's going to be some voltage drop on R1 and R2, but it's a good chance that the voltage here is going to be positive enough to turn on the diode. But if I have a negative infinity here at this point, then I know that, well, any voltage at this point or this point or this point or any point in the, my circuit, it has to be between ground and negative infinity. So it has to be negative, including the node at this voltage. So I'm going to have a negative voltage there. there therefore, the, the diode is definitely off. Okay. So I'm going to start from negative infinity. So starting from V in equal to negative infinity. So here, starting from left to right. At negative infinity, the diode is off. If the diode is off, uh, my circuit looks like this. I'm going to have my V in. And I have a resistor here, another resistor here. But then the second resistor is kind of like floating. There's no connection to ground, right? And V out is here. This is R2, this is R1. Well, what does this tell me? No current. No current means that, because there's, there's no path to ground, or there's no circuit, or there's no loop, let's say. So there's no current, therefore the voltage across the R1 is zero. Therefore, if here is V in, here is going to be V in. So V out is going to be equal to V in. Great. So starting from negative infinity, I know that I'm going to have a V out equal to V in. So I'm going to have a line similar to the previous example like this okay so how long this actually continues well until the voltage across the diode becomes greater than vd on so for the sake of clarity of explanation i'm going to call this node vx and i'm going to plot vx on this plot as well okay so i'm going to draw v out in black and vx in green right so what would be vx well, again, because there's no current, uh, like in the case that diode is off in here, uh, because there's no current, the voltage across R2 is also zero. So here is Vx. Therefore, Vx is also equal to Vn. So for the entire time, Vx is equal to Vn. Until, so like basically if I want to draw this, it's going to look like this. Until when? Until, well, Vx reaches uh the diode threshold voltage, Vd on. So let's say this is Vd on. If Vx reaches Vd on, at that point, what happens is that, well, my uh, diode turns on, and it's going to, the moment that the diode turns on, it becomes a voltage source equal to Vd on. So it's going to make Vx a flat line, right? But the question is not asking us for the Vx, it is asking us for V out. So how is gonna my um, how's my, my V out is gonna look like? Well, the moment that the so I know from my Vx analysis, I know that at V in equal to Vd on, my diode turns on. So if or when diode turns on, when D1 turns on. My circuit looks like this. So I'm going to have a voltage source, a resistor, another resistor, and a battery or voltage source, whatever you want to call it. 
so here's r1 here's r2 this is vd on and this is vn and this is v out okay so this looks like to me that um, basically i can write a kvl you can say that vn minus r1 i minus r2 i is equal to or minus vd on is equal to zero and then from here i can find i from well let's actually do it so i is going to be equal to v in minus vd on divided by r1 plus r2 and what is v out v out is vd on plus r2 i so again i use the simple kvl i wrote v out minus r2 i minus vd on is equal to zero and then i took the two terms to the other side so this is going to be equal to vd on plus r2 over r1 plus r2 times um, v in minus vd on okay so this tells me that from my, my black line which is the v out is going to be basically up to vd on is going to be v out is equal to, is going to be equal to v in and after that so up to here uh, the slope is equal to one right but after that i'm going to have a slope that is basically r2 over r1 plus r2 so it's going to be something like this so the slope of this guy is r2 over r1 plus r2 okay so again going back and look and reviewing the example i can see that again my dial has two different conditions off and on i have to actually analyze how the circuit looks like when the diode is off and when the diode is on right once i have that analysis all i need to know is well where is the ter turning point right where do i go from on to off and off to on and that is basically well we saw how we did it we actually followed the v out over v in and i realized we realized that vx which is the voltage across the diode um, is going to be constant after v in is greater than vd on because up to that point vx is equal to v in and then after that vx is going to be constant uh, the moment that this is fixed vx is fixed it becomes it means that the diode is on when the diode is on i have this voltage source and then i, I know how to analyze things okay okay let's solve another example again the input output characteristics is actually asked from us and uh, well the circuit is basically has a v in v out two resistors and a die um, let's start with the same place that we always start so i'm going to draw this v in v out plot and uh, let's assume that v in is at negative infinity when we are at negative infinity here I know that every node in the volt in the circuit is going to have a voltage between negative infinity and zero um, therefore this point and this point and everywhere else in the circuit is going to be is going to have a negative voltage therefore d1 is going to be off so we're starting with d1 off so when d1 is off i know that v out so when it's off it's an open circuit i'm not going to draw it again so we can move on move on a little bit quicker so when there's an open circuit there I, i'm just left with a voltage divider so v out is going to be r2 over r1 plus r2 times vn because the diode is not even in the, in the picture anymore okay so this means that if this is uh, so the, the slope of the line is going to be r2 over r1 plus r2 so i have something like this coming from negative infinity so this is the slope of the line r2 over r1 plus r2 okay now when does and i and i know that things will change when d1 turns on when does the t, d1 turns on for d1 to turn on I know that uh, V out has to be greater than 
uh, the VD on, right? The tertiary voltage. But I know that before turning on, uh, the diode is off. And when the diode is off, V out is equal to this, right? So V out being greater than VD on means that, well, whenever this fraction becomes greater than VD on, the diode will turn on, right? Therefore, it means that whenever R2 over R1 plus R2 times V in is greater than VD on, the diode will turn on. If I rearrange things here, it means that whenever V in is greater than R1 plus R2 over R2 times VD on. So that's the turning point. Whenever V in becomes greater than R1 plus R2 over R2 times VD on, I'm gonna have um, things change. I'm gonna have my diode on. So this line it basically continues until I reach, let's say here, which is R1 plus R2 over R2 times VD on. So once I reach there, the diode turns on. The moment the diode turns on, well, I know that it becomes a voltage source and my V out becomes that voltage source, which is equal to VD on. Okay. So we followed the exact same procedure as before. Um, I started from negative infinity and uh, worked my way all the way to positive infinity. After uh, this turning point, nothing more interesting is going to happen from that point forward because, well, as, as I increase the voltage more and more, the die is not going to go back to off or anything like that. Okay. And it kind of intuitively makes sense. If you think about it, about this circuit, when I have a very small V in, yeah, the diode is off. I have a voltage divider. Therefore, V out is a, basically has a linear relationship with V in as we have seen, as we see here, right? Whenever, and the turning point is going to be because I have a voltage divider, I know that V in has to be, uh, like V in being just V D on doesn't cut it for me because only a fraction of V in, the R2 over R1 plus R2, let's say uh, they're, they're equal. Let's say if, R1 plus R1 is equal to R2, right? If they're equal to each other, it means that half of V in reaches here. So, uh, and let's say, and if VD on, let's say it is equal to 0.7, right? Just to, for you guys to get some um, numerical perspective into this. So R1 is equal to R2 and VD on is equal to 0.7. So I know that when V in gets to 0.7, this node, let's call it Vx, is only 0.35, and that's not enough for my diode to turn on. My V in has to get to at least 1.4 for Vx to be 0.7, so that my V out, my v out is actually 0.7, so that my diode turns on. That's why uh, V in has to be a fraction greater than zero, which is this guy, times Vd on, which is the 0.7 guy, until my diode turns on and I have uh, the other uh, part of my plot.